Warning: The information in this film is for licensed veterinarians. Only qualified veterinarians should attempt the following procedures and techniques. The power float. The leader in gentle dentistry. The most effective tool in a veterinarian's arsenal. But before a veterinarian is able to operate the power float with optimum efficiency, he or she must first learn effective visual technique and the methods that maintain the power float in top condition. The power float plugs into polarized 115 volt outlets only. In countries with a 220 volt electrical system, a transformer that converts electricity to 115 volts will be necessary. Cordless models require DeWalt rechargeable 14.4 volt batteries. Fully charged, these batteries attach quickly at the handle space for unencumbered operation and contain enough power to float two complete sets of teeth. Use only extension cords approved for outdoor conditions. Keep in mind that extension cords with small gauge conducting wire can cause considerable voltage drop and result in premature wear to the power float's motor. Use only extension cords with appropriate length and gauge. The chrome shaft can be rotated 180 degrees. Two positions for the grinding head are possible. The up position for maxillary procedures and the down position for mandibular procedures. To lock the trigger switch to on, fully squeeze the trigger and push in the lock button located on the side of the handle. The motor will lock at its highest speed. To unlock, squeeze the trigger and release. All power float models variably spin from 0 to 4,000 RPM. Keep in mind to achieve optimum performance, maintain the grinding wheel speed to 3,000 RPM. For hands-free operation at speeds between 0 and 3,000 RPM, a quick grip clamp is provided. To set the trigger speed, slowly squeeze the clamp until the preferred speed is reached. To unlock the clamp, Press in the release. Before cleaning, washing, or adjusting the power float, always unplug the unit from its electrical source. To grease the gear system, first locate the black steel guard on the shaft near the grinding wheel. Rotate the guard to expose a small opening. This opening is where excess grease will flow out. Locate the grease port on the right angle portion of the shaft. Using a nylon brush, completely clean the port surface with a brisk brushing motion. Once the port is completely clean and free of tooth particles, a small stainless steel ball will become visible. Apply the taper end of the grease gun to the grease port. Then push down on the plunger to force grease into the gear mechanism. Keep in mind to position the grease gun correctly or grease may leak at the contact edges. Apply until fresh unsoiled grease exits the opening in the shaft.
When the shaft is pulled forward during rotation, a gap is created beside the collar. Periodically oil or place a small amount of grease in this gap. Over time, tooth material may work its way here and, if excessive, will prevent easy rotation of the shaft. Clean and disinfect the grinding wheel using chlorhexidine. This can be easily accomplished by spraying the grinding head with a pump containing a chlorhexidine solution. To maintain the power float's motor, periodically blow out all air passages located on the body with compressed air. To remove and replace the grinding wheel, first rotate the steel guard on the shaft to reveal the small opening. Next, insert a pin or a small allen key into the opening to lock the wheel's movement. Using small vice grips, grip the edges of the wheel and rotate it counterclockwise until loose. Unscrew and remove the used wheel, and then put a fresh wheel in its place. Screw in the new wheel clockwise until finger tight. Finally, remove the lock from the shaft and rotate the guard back over the shaft's opening. Though lightweight and compact, the power float can cause serious harm if appropriate safety measures are neglected. It is important that veterinarians take all necessary safety precautions to protect themselves, their patients, and their clients from injury. The following safety equipment should always be used while operating the power float. 1. Safety glasses and anti-fog for eye protection. Anti-fog will prevent fogging due to perspiration. 2. Earplugs or earphones to prevent injury to hearing. 3. A face mask for respiratory protection. 4. Examination gloves for protection against bacteria inside the horse's mouth. 5. A GFCI. When connected directly to an electrical outlet, ground fault circuit interrupters or GFCIs afford protection against severe electric shock. For proper safety, electrical components must be arranged in the following order. Electrical outlet. Connected to a GFCI. Connected to an extension cord. Connected to the power float. Since the motor is often positioned on or near a veterinarian shoulder during procedures, all long or loose hair must be tied back to prevent the possibility of hair being caught in the motor's air intake. Additionally, supply all personnel in the immediate working area with safety glasses to prevent possible eye injury from airborne particles. The horse should be sedated deeply enough to keep its head fully loaded on the dental halter's chin support. It is difficult to execute precise floating if the head does not stay sufficiently loaded. Irrigate the horse's mouth thoroughly with water. Then remove the regular halter before placement of the full mouth speculum. The regular halter is removed to prevent external side pressure against the cheeks. This way, more room inside the mouth is available on the buccal side of the cheek teeth. Place the full mouth speculum on the horse and adjust the opening to an appropriate gap. This will be the third click on most brands of speculum. Place the dental halter on the horse over top the speculum. The standing end of the rope will go over top any available overhead support such as a stall front or stock. Since the horse's head will also move forward as it is elevated, make sure the horse is at least a foot behind the rope support. In addition, also make sure the padded support of the halter is at the front of the horse's chin. If it slides back towards the throat, it becomes difficult to execute dental procedures. To elevate the horse's head, lift the chin support with one hand while pulling down on the rope with the other hand the rope will automatically lock in the cleat. To lower the horse's head, flip the rope out of the cleat, slowly let the horse's head lower down, and then lock the rope back in the cleat by using a quick downward tug. 
Finally, elevate the horse's head to a level that allows the veterinarian to comfortably see into the horse's mouth. Upper arcade technique incorporates the hand position known as pull cue grip. To execute a pull cue grip, grasp the side arms of the speculum with the last three fingers of the hand. Then spread the thumb and first finger to form a cradle for the power flow shaft to slide and pivot on. Keep in mind to always grip the side opposite the arcade being floated and to always insert the grinding wheel into the mouth through the cradle. To float the right upper arcade, Take position diagonally on the horse's left side and execute the pull cue grip with the right hand. To float the left upper arcade, take position diagonally on the horse's right side and execute the pull cue grip with the left hand. Slide the shaft through the cradle and across the mouth to the middle of the arcade and then tilt the right angle portion of the shaft to displace the cheek away from the teeth. Rotate the grinding wheel for a few seconds to allow the horse to get accustomed. Then move the wheel to the back of the arcade and begin floating at the rear teeth. The sharp point on the caudal aspect of the third upper molar can be removed by pushing the grinding wheel as far back as possible and slightly rotating the grinding surface on the back of the tooth. The wheel's guard will protect the soft tissue caudal even at the last tooth. Upper tooth contouring is used to float Triadan System Tooth 106 and Tooth 206 through three separate hand positions. The overhand fist grab grip, the modified pool cue grip, and the thumb and forefinger grip. To execute an overhand fist grab grip, wrap the chrome shaft of the power float tightly inside the thumb and fingers of the hand with the knuckles facing upwards. If the knuckles shift out of position, the wrist will move higher and block the line of sight. To execute a modified pool cue grip, spread the thumb, middle, and index fingers to form a cradle for the power float. Grip the shaft so that the thumb and the last three fingers are positioned underneath the shaft and the index finger wrapped over top. Then use the middle finger to abduct the horse's cheek to expose the tooth. To execute a thumb and forefinger grip, first insert the grinding wheel into the horse's mouth and then introduce the thumb and first finger into the interdental space to hold and steady the right angle. Keep the remaining three fingers out of the interdental space and use the dorsal part of the first finger and knuckle to abduct the corner of the mouth. To contour the rostral and the rostral buckle side of tooth 106, take position on the horse's left side with the power float parallel to the shoulders, then with the left hand, execute an overhand fist grab grip while operating the trigger with the right thumb. For tooth 206, take position on the horse's right side with the power float parallel to the shoulders and with the right hand, Execute an overhand fist grab grip while operating the trigger with the left thumb. Insert the grinding wheel in the corner of the mouth and slide the wheel across the tongue to a point below the tooth. Then reposition the hand grip so that the fist stabilizes against the arms of the speculum and steadies the grip on the shaft. Now the veterinarian can easily float and view the rostral and rostral buckle edges without placing either hand inside the mouth. If the buckle edge is too close to the mucosa, Float the edge of the teeth using the thumb and forefinger grip. For tooth 106, take position on the horse's left side, insert the grinding wheel into the mouth, and with the left hand, execute a thumb and forefinger grip. For tooth 206, take position on the horse's right side, insert the wheel into the mouth, and execute a thumb and forefinger grip with the right hand. With the thumb and forefinger grip, use the middle finger to push the buccal mucosa laterally and out of the way of the grinding wheel to prevent abrasion on the mucosa. To round the rostral and the rostral palatal edge of tooth 106, take position diagonally on the horse's right side and with the right hand execute a modified pull cue grip. For tooth 206, take position diagonally on the horse's left side and execute a modified pull cue grip with the left hand. Place the grinding wheel inside the corner of the mouth while using the middle finger to abduct the cheek and begin contouring. Lower arcade technique incorporates the hand position known as overhand fist grab grip. To execute this grip, wrap the chrome section of the shaft inside the thumb and fingers of the hand with the knuckles facing upwards and the wrist out of the line of sight. For the right arcade, take position directly in front of the horse and in close enough so that the headlamp shines straight down the dental arcade. With the right hand, 
execute an overhand fist grab grip, and then move the ground and wheel diagonally into the right corner of the mouth. For the left arcade, again take position directly in front of and close to the horse's mouth. With the left hand, execute an overhand fist grab grip, and then place the shaft diagonally into the left corner of the mouth. Once the grinding wheel has reached the arcade, tilt the right angle portion lingually to displace the tongue, and then use the diagonal position of the shaft to pull the corner of the cheek laterally. In addition, remember to keep the head in close and the wrist out of the line of sight to achieve maximum exposure of the arcade. After the sharp enamel points on the lingual side of the teeth are floated, the right angle can be tilted to a more vertical position or slanted towards the buckle side of the teeth to remove dominant projections such as tall teeth or exaggerated transverse ridges. To remove very tall caudal hooks on Triadan System Tooth 311 and Tooth 411, the narrow width design of the right angle allows it to be tilted lingually or buckily so that it can slide past the edge of the first upper tooth and be placed in the narrow region between the last upper and lower teeth. Lower tooth contouring technique is used to float Tridan System Tooth 306 and Tooth 406 through two separate hand positions. The modified pool cue grip and the thumb and forefinger grip. To execute a modified pool cue grip, spread the fingers to form a cradle for the shaft. Grip the shaft with the thumb and the last three fingers underneath and the index finger wrapped over top. Then use the middle finger to abduct the horse's cheek. To execute a thumb and forefinger grip, Insert the power float into the mouth and then hold the right angle portion next to the wheel guard by the thumb and forefinger with the knuckles facing up. To round the rostral and the rostral lingual edge of tooth 306, take position diagonally on the horse's left side and with the left hand execute a modified pool cue grip. For tooth 406, take position diagonally on the horse's right side and execute a modified pool cue grip with the right hand. Place the grinding wheel inside the corner of the mouth while using the middle finger to abduct the cheek. This places tension on the fold of mucosa that loosely doubles up against the rostral area of the tooth. The fold must be pulled out of the way of the edge of the grinding wheel to prevent the wheel from causing damage. To round the rostral and the rostral buckle edge of tooth 306, take position on the horse's right side and with the right hand execute a thumb and forefinger grip. For tooth 406, Take position on the horse's left side and execute a thumb and forefinger grip with the left hand. Insert the grinding wheel into the corner of the mouth and then execute a thumb and forefinger grip. Keep the last three fingers outside the interdental space and use the dorsal area of the forefinger to abduct the upper corner of the cheek for better exposure of the tooth. If necessary, the thumb can also extend beyond the edge of the guard to keep mucosal folds away from the grinding surface. Some horses can have very tight cheeks that hinder maneuverability in the rear of the mouth. To overcome this problem, lessen cheek tension by one or more of the following methods. Collapse the speculum by one or more clicks. In most speculums, reduction by a single click decreases the width between the incisor plates between 3.5 to 2 and 3 quarter inches or 8 and 3 quarter to 6 and 3 quarter centimeters. Slightly lower the dental halter supporting the horse's chin. A lower head position often reduces rear cheek tension. Bend the horse's head and neck slightly so that the floating is done on the inside or concave of the bed. Some horses may have large masseter muscles where the space between the caudal part of the rear upper cheek teeth and the buccal mucosa is tight. In these situations, Remove the speculum and secure a plastic gag behind the incisor teeth. Insert the grinding wheel under the gag and position it to reach the outside caudal edge of tooth 111 or tooth 211. This technique allows a steeper angle of attack to round the caudal edge of the tooth. Continual floating of a single tooth for one minute can raise the internal temperature of the tooth by 5 to 6 degrees Celsius, where damage to the odontoblasts begin. If floating occurs for more than 20 seconds on a single tooth, irrigate the tooth with water to keep it cool and to prevent thermal injury. In preparation for incisor bite alignment, remove both the speculum and the dental halter from the horse's head. To keep the horse's mouth open during incisor procedures, 
position a plastic gag inside the mouth as you would place a bit from a bridle, and with elastic cord, secure the gag around the pole of the horse. Resecure the dental halter on the horse's head, and then adjust the halter to an appropriate height that allows the horse to comfortably rest its head on the chin support. Use a quick grip clamp to adjust the power float's trigger until the desired speed is reached. For incisor bite alignment procedures, two separate hand positions can be incorporated, the overhand fist grab grip and the sidearm C-clamp grip. For overhand fist grab grip, support the shaft on top of either shoulder with the motor suspended above the back. Using either hand, wrap the area of the shaft nearest the right angle inside a fist with the knuckles facing upwards. Then place the free hand to hold onto the bridge of the horse's nose and begin floating. For sidearm C-clamp grip, hold one hand in the shape of a C with the thumb at the bottom and the fingers forming the top. The second hand has two options to grip with. For hands-free operation, grip the chrome shaft with an underhand fist grab and then place the grinding wheel inside the C formed by the first hand. For variable speed control of the grinding wheel, Remove the quick grip clamp and then grip the power floats motor using the fingers to operate the trigger. To float upper incisors, use the thumb to apply pressure to the right angle portion and the fingers to stabilize the grip. To float lower incisors, the fingers will apply pressure to the right angle portion while the thumb stabilizes the grip. The overhand fist grab grip has the advantage of placing the least amount of stress on the hands in addition to freeing the trigger hand to stabilize and to keep the horse's head in a comfortable working position. The sidearm C-clamp grip has the advantage of allowing greater flexibility and range of motion for shaping incisor teeth. It also gives the veterinarian the option of floating using variable speed or hands-free operation of the trigger. Sequential flow technique is a combination of all arcade and contouring techniques into one ordered and comprehensive procedure. With practice, this technique can increase floating efficiency with no loss in performance or results. Begin by executing the upper cheek technique using the left pool cue grip in the back of the horse's left arcade. Once the front tooth is reached, rotate the power float around into upper tooth contouring technique while executing a right overhand fist grab grip or a right thumb and forefinger grip and contour only the buckle side of tooth 206. Once contouring is finished, slide the grinder wheel across to tooth 106 and change the hand position into a modified pool cue grip then contour only the lingual side of tooth 106. Rotate back around into upper arcade technique and execute a right pool cue grip to begin floating the right upper arcade. Once the front tooth is reached, rotate the power float around into upper tooth contouring technique, then execute a left thumb and forefinger grip or a left overhand fist grab grip and finish tooth 106 by contouring the buckle side. Then slide the ground and wheel across to tooth 206 and change the hand position to a modified pool cue grip. Then contour only the lingual side of tooth 206 to complete the upper arcades. Rotate the shaft into the down position. Resume flow technique by executing lower arcade technique using the left overhand fist grab grip in the back of the left lower arcade. If necessary, readjust the dental halter to the veterinarian's preferred position for lower teeth. Once the grinding wheel reaches to 306, alter the hand position into a left modified pool cue grip. Use this position to contour only the lingual side of 2306. Then slide the grinding wheel across the horse's mouth and execute a left thumb and forefinger grip to contour the buckle side of 2406. Next, switch hand positions back to lower arcade technique by executing a right overhand fist grab grip and begin floating the right lower arcade. Once tooth 406 is reached, alter hand positions into a right modified pool cue grip to contour the lingual side of tooth 406. Then slide the power float across the mouth and execute the right thumb and forefinger grip to contour the buckle side of tooth 306.
Once contouring on 2306 is finished, sequential flow technique is complete.